today on the TMZ Podcast. Hello and welcome to the TMZ Podcast. I'm Charlie Cotton and today I'm joined by Melanie Miller, fresh off. You just got back from Vegas, your birthday in Vegas. Yeah. How's the voice? It's um, not good. No. I, I do fear that I probably will forever ruin my voice. By, by being on the podcast today? No. Just in general? Just in general. It's interesting. We didn't realize, or you didn't tell us you didn't have a voice until you sat down in this podcast chair. And now we're just kind of learning out 30 seconds before. Um, no, the voice is there. It's there. It it's is there. Definitely there. Vaguely there. All right, let's try to get through this. I mean, you were the obvious choice to host today because A, you're a massive free britney yeah. and I think it's getting increasingly hard to be a free britney -er. We're going to talk about all of the bandages and wounds on her following her knife dancing escapade. We're going to talk about, this is probably appropriate for you too, a partier pilot, a par pilot party too much. And so, uh, he was banned from his flight because stuff came out about what he was up to the night before. We're going to talk about that. Some very raunchy stuff. Okay. But to begin with, what day are we on now? Day five, Travis and Taylor. Um, this was honestly, I was driving to Vegas when this news broke and I, I like, I just wanted to sit and look at TikTok and the news and, and just capture every moment of this. I really do feel like when Taylor sh turned up to the game, it was almost like a where were you? It's like a moon landing type yeah. thing. Like, where were you when you found out that Taylor was at Travis Kelsey's game? Where were you? On the way to Vegas? On the way to Vegas. On the way to Vegas. Easily the like, happiest day of my life. Is that right? Yeah. Easily the happiest oh, day. The Swifty communities are, are, are for this. Oh, we're, oh, I know. we're obsessed. I know. I we're know. Obsessed. You're obsessed. Um, and then you celebrated about it for days, oh, clearly. Clearly. Um, okay, let's play some of the sound we've got now because Travis, for the first time, spoke out about Taylor coming to his game. Okay. Shout out to Taylor for uh, for pulling up. That was pretty ballsy. That was pretty ballsy. Yeah. <laughs> I um, I just thought it was awesome how everybody in the suite had nothing but great things to say about her. You know, the the friends and family. She looked amazing. Everybody was talking about her in a, in great light. And on top of that, uh, you know the. The day went perfect for Chiefs fans, of course. It, <laughs> we script it all, ladies and gentlemen. It was it was just impressive. It was impressive. He had to say, like, everyone loved her in the suite. Imagine if someone had given her some negative feedback. Ah, oh, she was a bit no, loud. But did you, she was even, like, cleaning up after people in the suite. <sighs> what do you think about I want to know what you think about this. About you, this relationship? I, about, yeah, about him. Oh, I mean, he's just... you got to bow but, down to him. You know what I mean? Like... He had this dating show, date, uh, Catching Kelsey, like yeah. nearly 10 years ago. So he's been like just a Jack the Lad, you know, just a legend you for years and you, years. You like the relationship? You think it's going to work out? I, I I do like the relationship. I'm not sure how much sort of, um, I don't know how deep in the relationship they are. or if Well, she is... left yesterday morning. She was there all weekend. Yeah, in Kansas. In Kansas City. Yeah, I mean, I mean do you think they've banged yet, for instance? Oh, for sure do they've you, banged. Are you really? joking? Yeah. I feel like they are just getting to know each other very on the surface well, right now. I don't know if you saw this, but a bunch of clips have resurfaced basically saying, like, um, I don't know if we're allowed to say this, that he doesn't like a deal breaker is if a girl doesn't like oral sex and if he starts to question if um, it's, like, going anywhere, oh. if they don't have sex before before the third date. Okay. Good. I can hardly hear you because of the, the voice, obviously. But you, you're saying that, yeah, he, in the past, because he's been such a lad, he's talked about how if a girl doesn't do this by date three or if a girl doesn't do that uh -huh. by date four, it's over. I'm out. Deal, deal breaker. breaker. So how many dates are they on right now? Probably, probably at least three or four. At least three or four. This feels like the third or fourth date. Because so, yeah. I think we reported they hung out a couple times, too. This would be third. They... Banged all weekend long in Kansas City. I hope so. I hope so too. I hope so. I mean, yeah, I, I think that Taylor and Travis, at least, even if it is surface level now, everyone's in so much to this relationship that yeah. they've got to really give it a red hot crack for us and, and really try to make it work. Oh, for sure. Maybe forever. For, for us. us. For, we for need us. for us. We're like the kids. Yeah. And, and they've got to try to make their marriage stick for us. Otherwise, 
Maybe, we'll have is it real. It, well, I'll just think like, you know, is it me that, that you didn't work out, that we were too, you know what I mean? We were too into it. We were too into it. We put too much pressure on you. I can't wait. Well, the next game they're playing is the New York Jets in New York. She lives in New York. I cannot wait to see if she And isn't the Eras Tour like getting restarted on the back of that New York game? Mm. Pretty soon, uh, October eighteenth or something like Just that. Just get with my narrative. When so it's October fifteenth or where fourteenth? Uh, yeah, eighteenth. I think it's in like Buenos Aires. Oh, Buenos Aires. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. See, Travis is just going to go. This is like a one month, like, you know, r- uh, vacation know. romance for her before she gets back on tour. And he's just like in the, having the time of his life. Oh. Like, this is more exciting than him winning a Super Bowl. Like, oh, it easily. Has to be. This he, is so this, cool. It's exhilarating. He's on top of the world right now. So he did. I do love how everyone said that he put Travis Kelsey on the map because he absolutely did. Oh, yeah. I mean, to anyone who's not like a football fan type, then For sure. uh, everyone knows his, like, you know, people in Australia say know his name now. And you think anyone in Australia knows a tight end for the Kansas City Chiefs right, otherwise? Exactly. Uh, no. No. So, yes, he was put on the global map a million percent. Oh. Um, and it's just so funny to me, all of like the businesses trying to glob on and try to, you know, make the most of this fever for themselves. For instance, all the Kansas City businesses, yeah. like dentists and cafes, everywhere is going, I heard a rumor, Taylor came in to get her dental work done here. And they've like photoshopped an image of Taylor at the dentist. At the, everyone in Kansas City is trying to pretend that Taylor came here, Taylor came here, because they know how much more business that might drum up. I'm just so happy that everyone is, like, so Team Taylor right now. It, he, this is so good for her. Like, I like her way more that she's dating a cool athlete yeah. rather than a lame Maddie Healy yeah. loser. Yeah, 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 yeah. Finally, we have a nice American daddy. Yes, 100%. Ugh. And that American daddy, his jersey sales are through the roof. I literally became a Chiefs fan. I'm going to go out and buy Chiefs merch. What until they break up, though? You're going to burn it? Yeah, probably. Yeah, okay. It doesn't matter, does it? And yeah. then... um. He, also, Heinz ketchup. Because um, well, she was eating chicken fingers with ranch and ketchup. She was eating chicken fingers in the box with Travis's mum with uh, ketchup and ranch. And so Heinz has now come out with the, uh, their own Taylor Swift bottle of, it says ketchup and seemingly ranch. Because fans didn't know what, if, if it was exactly ranch or not. So they called it seemingly ranch. Oh, that's hilarious. So now Heinz has come out with ketchup and seemingly ranch sauce. Um, <sighs> who else? Etsy. If you go on Etsy. Oh, I want, I want all of it. There's so much merch like I'm in my Kelsey era or go Taylor's boyfriend. You can buy all these t-shirts with all of these different slogans on it. Loving him was red, whatever that one means. And honestly, I will say, cause I wasn't here. I was, I was out. I've never seen her this happy. Like, did you You've see? You've never seen her that happy? No. She's always pretending to be happy. She is not pretending. Okay. Don't try to shout. <laughs> whatever you do. Um, but no, she, when she was getting in the car, the, she was getaway, smiling. the getaway car, yeah. she was waving hi to everyone. But she always does that. She's always no, like, no, she never does. She haven't like, you seen her at every, like any event ever? She's like, I'm the best supporter of my friends. I'm the happiest person. I love everybody. No, I'm jumping and screaming. Date, she's not like waving at people. When she's going to restaurants in New York, she's not waving at people. She's definitely leaning in and she knows everyone loves this and she loves that everyone loves this and... I think that, like, he, lo- like, this is the first guy that, like, is cool with all the attention she gets, and, and he likes it. Yeah. And I'm like, this is, a perf- this is a perfect relationship. I hope our listeners like this story, too, because it feels like we're going to be covering it a bunch. I mean, uh, I, I, I like the story, too. I just, I'm sure they're going to give us new, different stuff. It'll be. This is going to be the biggest story of the year. It, it very well could be the biggest story of the year, which is amazing. You're right. Oh, I love it. Okay. On to our next story. Okay. Britney Spears did another dancing video, this time sans knives, but with bandages, one around her arm, and also she's got gashes on her thigh. She's got another gash on her back. Um, look, we don't know that it these gashes came from the knives, but it's peculiar to do a Dances with Knives video, and then the next video, it's you all cut up. Um, she did say they were fake knives. She, no, no. She added art way afterwards oh. that they were fake knives. She put out the post saying, here I am dancing with knives. I just found these in the kitchen. And then she saw all the heat she was getting online. She, and then she turned off comments and then edited her, her caption saying, oh, by the way, they're fake knives. Uh, I watched the video in Britney. They're not fake knives. Are they not? No. You're no. sure? 100% not fake knives. 
in my yeah, opinion. Why would you keep those two big knives, fake knives around the house? Because she's got a fascination with knives. Haven't you read TMZ.com? She's always had a fascination no, with knives. I do read TMZ.com. But Not enough. I'm saying, what I'm saying is, like, why would somebody keep two fake knives in the house? Exactly. Okay. okay. Oh, you're on my side. Yeah. It's hard to hear you, Melanie. <laughs> Seriously, this is such a peculiar episode. This is a very special episode of TMZ Podcast <laughs> where you can't hear Melanie and you probably don't even understand my accent. So you're probably just like <laughs> listening to it. What the hell is going on? Oh, keep Can listening you really there. not hear me? It's just, it sounds so weird. Uh, can you hear? <laughs> oh my God, you sound like you're conjuring like a devil within. Like she, it sounds out of worldly. It, you, so you're, you're summoning something. It's why are you here on the podcast today, Melanie? <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, also, she was dancing with these knives above dogs. And now everyone online is like saying, take her dogs away from it. She's got three dogs. Those poor dogs need help. They ran scared. They need to be rescued. It'd be nice if a rescue dog, they got rescued and, you know, it, is it dangerous for her to be dancing with knives above dogs? Yes. Well, you're not supposed to run with scissors, especially not dance with knives. No. And one could like go flying or she could stab herself. So, so as a, f you were like the most vocal free Britney person ever. So I want you to try to explain this and uh, are you sticking to your free Britney stuff? Cause you leaned in hard for a long time and you would never give any ground. No, let her be free. Let her be free. W do you think now it was in her best interests to, to remove the conservatorship, leave her alone in the house, do whatever she wants? I think it's her life. Okay. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> It's her life. So you know why, why conservatorships are invented? To protect people who can't protect themselves. Yes, exactly. But like, we don't protect people unless they have money. Like, there's plenty of homeless people out in LA that we don't care about protecting because they don't have any money. All right. Okay. But it feels like you're changing the goalpost. Does, does Brittany need to be protected even though she does have money? Do you think that she is doing a good job of caring for herself when you see videos like this? I just think she should just let fly how she wants to. <sighs> God, you free Britney people are a different breed. <laughs> but, you really but, are. But you don't want your freedom taken away or like... But I don't dance with knives and have mental illness. Well, I might. I don't know. It hasn't been diagnosed, but... You probably have mental illness. Maybe, mental but illness. but she has diagnosed mental illness that none of you Britney, Britney... That none of you free Britney people ever acknowledge. You're just like, let her be free. Let her live her life. Um, She's like unwell and she needs, you know, to be taken care of. But, but what do you want to do? Just lock her up? No, I want her, someone, a conservator, not her dad, but someone who's got her best interest at heart to make sure she gets her meds, make sure she doesn't dance with knives. But I don't, you don't think someone is around doing that? Like her, her manager, Cade? No, no. Cade, the guy who we got a shirtless photo of holding her up at that party that other night? No, Cade is not like out. She's clearly got no one at home with her right now. That's why she's dancing with knives on, on Instagram. She thinks that's okay to post? I oh. am actually really enjoying how, how, um... Worked up? Yeah, and concerned for her safety you are. I'm very concerned for her safety. Yeah, you know me. It's very nice of you. Thank you. Brittany, Brittany we, we care for you. We love you. She needs help. Okay, on to our next story right. and our final story. You right. heard about this pilot? This pilot from a British Airways plane. Um, they made a pit stop in Johannesburg or Joburg, as they call it there. Oh, I didn't know. Joburg. Um, and so, you know how these pilots you know, and, and flight attendants and everything... Anyone who works on planes, they have nights off here and there, different yeah. ports, different cities around the world. Yeah. Well, on this night out, this pilot, you know, ran into some people and ended up having a drug-filled, boozy, um, snorting coke off a lady's breasts type of night. And normally, great. I mean, <laughs> that sounds amazing. But he had work the next morning. And so... Uh, while he was all coked up and everything, he was texting a flight attendant that he knew that was going to be on the flight the next day saying, you know, or what did he call it? He said, I've been a very naughty boy. <laughs> and so when he showed up for the plane the next day, they were like, uh, no. And so they canceled the flight and he was fired. And now this story is like going viral because why text that? Why do it? Why text it? Yeah. It's just, and it's also, it's, it's relatable because I guess we always worry or we don't know how, we don't know who's flying our plane. Yeah, like we don't really see them. We don't see them. We don't know. And so. And people are just people. Like they do mess up things all the time. Yeah. People like to party. We right, Melanie? Yeah. Big time. People like to party. Uh, clearly. And even if they have work the next day. <laughs> it was my birthday yesterday. Oh, happy birthday. Thanks. How, how was it? It was really great, obviously. Yeah, really great. Sounds really great. How old do you turn? 
Oh, pretty old. I'm 34. Oh, 34? Yeah. Oh, you're nearly my age. I'm ah. 35. It's hard, huh? It's hard. You can't party as much as you used to. I can try. Um, do you think that this happens a lot? Yes, because I will tell you this. So I went, I saw, what's the Denzel Washington movie? Oh, yeah, Flight. Flight. Okay, called. so I went to um, a Q&A for the movie Flight, and the writer was there. And he, he said when he was doing research for the movie, he talked to a bunch of pilots, and every time they would say, because he was doing coke and um, yeah. alcohol when he was flying, Denzel playing, was? Yeah. Well, the guy he was playing. In the, in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And apparently they're like, oh, I know a guy. Every time you ask a pilot about this kind of situation, yeah. they always know a guy. Because it's one of those, like... It's very common. Those jobs where you kind of, like, make a bit lonely in different cities. You don't know anyone. Yeah. And so I guess that, you know, it leads you maybe to drink a bit just to, to, to get rid of the, you know, feeling of being on a plane. You just need to go to sleep in this different time zone. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and sometimes they, I think they party a lot. I know flight attendants do that. They, they party. Yeah, they do. Of course they party a lot. You're in different cities for a night only. If you're in Barcelona for the night only, you're going to hit the town. Have some sangria. You know what I mean? And that's that's kind of what they do. So it does make you worry that... But uh, do you feel like he should have been fired? Oh, uh, yes, definitely. Because he, he was going to try to fly the plane. But he was sober when he... Um, I know, but after a night out... I mean, he still had his the drugs in his system. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, the, the the alcohol had worn off because he wasn't in. They drug tested him in the end, Oof. and um, of course he should be fired. And I think now maybe pilots are going to have to pass different stringent tests because once a big story like this happens, yeah, then it makes everyone a little bit worried. Did you fly back from Vegas or did you? I drove. You drove back from yeah. Vegas. Oh, we and you were all good to go. Yeah, just couldn't talk. I, yeah, I, yeah. What was the highlight of your Vegas trip? What was the what was the best sort of half an hour? What was the highlight? As she, as she kind of burps a little bit under her breath, <laughs> you're like, Bleh. I heard, I saw that. <laughs> Getting ready to answer the question. Um, I we played a lot of like um, poker and we won money. Oh, you won money in poker? Yeah. How much? Well, it was my friend's money. He won money. He won money. We you won nothing. Together. Did you pay for your drinks though? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 What a win. What a win. Wow. Well, yeah. you're going into your next year with style, Melanie. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on the podcast. Thank despite you for having me. Your condition. <laughs> um, enjoy the rest of the day at work. I hope this isn't permanent. I hope it's not permanent either. Otherwise, this may be the last time <laughs> you hear Melanie Miller on the pod. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and we'll speak to you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. -bye.